I'm getting caught up in the hereafter. You'll understand this the older you get in Jesus Christ. The older you get in Jesus Christ, the more sweeter heaven becomes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Because we're not looking here. We're looking there. Brenda, your mama passed away the other day, and she went into the presence of Jesus. I appreciate so much you telling me that she saw an angel at the foot of her bed. And she spoke to her loved ones on the other side. What was happening with Brenda's mama? I'll tell you what was happening. She wasn't looking here. She was looking over there. Amen. Amen. I've seen it so many times. I've been in many a hospital room. I've been in many a home, a room in a home where a patient and a Christian is dying. They raise their hands and they do this. They're waving to somebody in heaven, Larry, on the other side. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It becomes sweeter because you know where your focus needs to be. Where your focus needs to be. He gives some further instructions, and we're going to wrap this up. Verses 14 through 18. I want to give you four things. You won't find them on the screen, so I ask you to write them down. Do your best to live in purity and peace. Verse 14. Do your best to the light of the times in which you live in to live in purity and peace. Secondly, verse 15, interpret the Lord's delay as salvation. That means we're living in the day of salvation, church. We're living in the day of salvation. These names on this cross ought to be off of this cross because we're living in the day of salvation. We need to lead these people to a saving knowledge in Jesus. And so look at the delay of His coming. Is the heart of God wants to see everybody saved. The Bible says it's not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All come to repentance. This is the day of salvation. Look at his, the Lord's delay as salvation. Thirdly, in verse 17, be on guard lest you lose your footing as a child of God. Be on guard. In other words, that's a defensive move on your part of mine. Boy, we've got to be defensive. Be on guard lest you lose your footing and you begin to slip yourself. That you are led by those who are wicked instead of by God. Number four, grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. That's the offensive move. Offense and defense. Defense is being on guard lest I lose my footing. Offensive is growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And he says, you need to do this in the light of these days. I'm about to make that transition, he's saying. And I will leave, I'll leave these words to you in this last letter, this second letter, as I did in the first letter. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Let me give you this closing thought. In the mind and heart of God, since Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, it could possibly be only one day as God sees it. I just throw that out for consideration. The Bible says a thousand years is as one day, and one day is a thousand years. And so God knows all about time because He created time. And one day, praise God, we'll move out of time into eternity. Won't need your appointment calendar anymore. <laughs> You won't have to keep up with the days. You'll just keep up with eternity. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. Isn't that going to be good? Isn't that going to be good? You know, throw them computers out. Throw those text messages out. The reason I don't text is because I carry the text. <laughs> oh, man. And I'll give you a second reason. I don't want to learn this stage in my old life. <laughs> I don't have the thumb capability <laughs> to do that. But listen, I want to tell you, when you get to glory, you won't have to do that anymore. You won't have to call anybody. You won't have to text anybody. Because you will move out of time of space and temporariness into the space of eternity forever, forever. Let's stand to our feet in prayer. Would you stand and bow with me for just a moment?